Hello, my name is Kelly Frank. And I'm Tracy Rice reporting from MRFA Channel 6 News from Appleton, Wisconsin. The stories topping today's news are the Packers beat the Patriots 26 to 21. Black Friday shopping is complete and another Cyber Monday is in the books with Christmas right around the corner. But first we have breaking news out of Theta Clark Medical Center of a confirmed case of measles. Kelly has more on this story. Thanks, Tracy. To begin with, first let's take a closer look at this disease thought to be eradicated from the United States. Measles is a highly contagious illness that is spread through respiratory droplets from the nose, throat, or mouth of somebody who is already infected with the virus. When somebody coughs or sneezes, these droplets spray out and can quickly contaminate the air. Unfortunately, victims are often those who are unvaccinated or who are immunocompromised and unable to be vaccinated. It's important to note that the virus can remain airborne for up to two hours after the infected individual has left the room. And in most recent case, little Michelle Hebler has tested positive for measles. Now we'll go to Cedar Clark Medical Center where our on-scene correspondent Lisa is standing by with Dr. Coonan and the Hebler family. Lisa? Thank you, Kelly and Tracy. I'm at the Fox Valley Clinic with Dr. Brady and his patient Michelle. Hi, Dr. Brady. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Um, I hear that you have the measles. Oh, you look miserable. Yeah. Um, Dr. Brady, is Michelle contagious? She's very contagious. Uh, at this point, she should probably have a mask on. Uh, what causes the measles? Uh, the measles is caused by a virus known as uh, morbidly virus. And how are the measles spread? Uh, measles are spread through air secretion uh, from the nose, throat, and mouth uh, when you cough or sneeze. <coughs> how long can the virus stay in a room such as this one? Um, after the patient were to leave, uh, maybe two hours, it would be pretty contagious in here. Okay, so we'll avoid it. <laughs> yes. uh, how long will little Michelle be contagious? Uh, normally the child, uh, Michelle, she'll probably be contagious for four days before getting the rash, or she was contagious four days before getting the rash, and uh, for four more days after the rash, definitely contagious. Mm -hmm. Michelle, do you have any sisters or brothers at all? No, it's just me. <laughs> do you plan on having any? Yeah. Do you want some, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you discuss that with your mommy after the measles are over, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I noticed that Michelle has a cough, rash, runny nose. Um, what other symptoms are there, doctor? Yeah. Uh, the onset of symptoms are usually mild to uh, moderate fever. Uh, like you said, a persistent cough, runny nose, conjunctivitis, uh, sore throat that could last two to three days, and then white spots with blue centers will appear inside the mouth cheek area. These are called coughing spots. I don't like a cough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is a lot. <laughs> yes, uh, then the rash will appear, like Michelle has now, uh, these are red spots that are slightly raised. Um, how, uh, does the rash go away all at once? Uh, no. It will s slowly uh, disappear starting with the face as it came on your body. That's how I mean it slowly goes away from the arms, trunk, thighs, leg. Okay, and then goes away in the same order. In the same order, yes, exactly. Okay, and what body systems are compromised by the measles? Uh, measles targets the respiratory system. The virus enters through the mouth, uh, goes down the throat into the lungs where uh, it grows and gets in the blood. Uh, how dangerous are the measles? Da uh, measles are very dangerous. They could cause pneumonia, bronchitis, seizures, brain damage, and possibly death. Uh, what can be done once you have the measles, such as Michelle? Uh, you know, with Michelle, we'll just try to keep her comfortable with lots of rest and fluids to prevent dehydration and, of course, control the fever. My throat hurts too much to drink. Yes, that, I believe it. Uh, I understand that. Uh, we might have to put an IV in your arm, a needle. Uh, you don't want one of those, right? No. No, uh, that's why we like to get popsicles. Popsicles are liquid. Would you like one? I would love one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now that Michelle is happy, yes. <laughs> do antibiotics work? 
Uh, no, only if the complications develop, such as pneumonia, bronchitis, or ear infections. Now, I remember getting the vaccine as a child. Do they still get those? My mom doesn't like shots. Yes, uh, <laughs> vaccines are the best prevention to the virus. Uh, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is a attenuated vaccine, which is uh, it's a weakened strain of the measles virus, and it's given in the fatty tissue under the skin. It, uh, it's given in two separate doses. Okay, and why two doses? Approximately 5% of people that receive it do not uh, develop the protective antibodies the first time, and the second is required. And when should the vaccine be given? Uh, the first dose we like to give 12 to 15 months, and then after uh, maybe four or five years down the road or when the child is entering school. Uh, are there any side effects from the vaccine? Uh, mild rash is common, seven to ten days after receiving the vaccine. That's pretty normal. I mean, that can be common. Okay. Are there any severe um, reactions? Uh, they're very rare, but they could uh, include allergic reactions and brain inflammation. Uh, but they're very rare, and uh, we just suggest that parents do the research and talk with their doctor and decide what's best for them. Millions of people have received the uh, vaccine in the U.S., and they're fine. That's good to know. Um, if you believe your child has come in contact with someone who has had the measles um, and your child has not been vaccinated, what do you recommend? Uh, it would be good to get the vaccine. Uh, if you get it within three days, the, uh, the severity might be, you know, it won't be as bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, does the vaccine cause autism? There is no scientific evidence that it does. No. Uh, can you get the vaccine if you're pregnant or if you plan on becoming pregnant? Uh, no, that well, there's. A question for your like, mom. <laughs> perfect. Yes. Uh, no, and avoid getting pregnant. You know, four weeks after receiving the dose. Okay. And who should not get the vaccine? Anyone with immunodeficiency. You know, AIDS, leukemia, lymphoma. Mm -hmm. um, anyone receiving cancer treatments such as drugs, radiation. <laughs> but if you have HIV without symptoms, you can definitely get vaccinated. Okay. And uh, what tests are needed to diagnose the measles? Um, usually, we see the rash, the copic spots. Um, those are very, that's a dead giveaway, but we like to uh, confirm with the blood test. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Brady and Michelle, for all of your time. Um, I'm sure this information will help a lot of our viewers. Uh, Michelle, I do hope you get better soon. Thanks. Uh, this is Lisa reporting from MRSA, Channel 6, Appleton. Look what I can do. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa, for that update and great information. Now, the question that's on everybody's mind is, will little Michelle be okay? A majority of patients will recover. However, complications may arise, which will require additional remedies. These complications may include pneumonia, encephalitis, myocarditis, pericarditis, and hepatitis, which would prolong the recovery period. Complications are most seen in third world countries and in immunocompromised patients. You should see your doctor right away if you have a fever after your rash starts, a stiff neck, difficulty breathing, increased cough, or a headache not relieved with medication. A cough may last one to two weeks after the initial measles infection. Complete recovery may take several weeks though. Tracy, it's key here to also share with our viewers just what precautions should be taken to avoid contracting measles. The number one and most important way to prevent becoming infected with measles is through vaccination. A combination shot called MMR, which stands for measles, mumps, and rubella, is recommended for babies at 15 months with a booster at five. Anyone who is concerned about paying for these immunizations can usually find help by contacting their local health department. If someone is known to be infected with measles, isolation, isolation precautions are necessary. This would mean avoiding contact with the public during the contagious period. And Kelly, if I may, I'd like to quickly touch on an interesting bit of information that was in the news recently. According to the CDC, between January 1st and May 23rd of this year, there were 288 cases of measles reported in the United States. So little Michelle is not alone. This is the largest number since 1994.
Clearly, this disease is not eradicated like some had thought. Almost all reported cases are due to people not being vaccinated. While in some instances, vaccination is not possible due to compromised immune systems, others fear associated, other fears associated with vaccines causing autism are a source of re refusal. This theory has been discredited, and so prevention through immunizations is really stressed when able. Thanks for that additional information, Tracy. Our thoughts will definitely be with little Michelle and her family as she recovers. And we should conclude our coverage of this news story by once again stressing the importance of prevention through vaccination. Now we'll send it over to our anchor in the sports booth who has an update on the Packers.